Thanks, Matt. You know, I, I do appreciate, Matt, uh, when, we, uh, when I was on staff at Jackson Road and exploring pastoring, exploring, exploring planting, Matt just always treated me like a peer, like an equal, and I, I just have grown to appreciate him over the years. As a matter of fact, as uh, one of my favorite meetings every month was with the other planners to get catch up, to catch up with Matt, and uh, when we went to general conference a few years ago, I probably enjoyed my time with Matt and Leah more than I did this, the sessions and stuff, so uh, it, was, it, was just a, it was just a great time. And so, uh, like Matt had expressed, uh, we have a shared history that we both worked uh, at the Vineyard Church on Jackson Road. We both launched out of that church. And so because of that, there's a good amount of you that maybe are, many of you know me, I know you, but I know Cornerstone Vineyard is a growing, healthy church, so some of you may not be aware of who I am. So let me just catch you up a little bit on who I am. So there's a picture coming up of my lovely wife and family. And so um, down center there is uh, my wife, Kim. And uh, if you look just above her, the 16-year-old boy, that's my son. That's David Jr. Uh, he's a lot of fun. Uh, by the way, like I do... Uh, amateur com comedy on the side. I'm not even the funniest person in my house. Like, my wife and son are clearly, hands down, much funnier than I am. Uh, my mean mug is above my son. Uh, the gentleman with a the beard there is my son in law, Drew. And then right by him is uh, my daughter, Kaylee. And uh, the unicorn in the picture is my first and only grandchild at this time, Sadie. And so, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Can I tell you, if I had known having grandchildren was so much fun, I'd have skipped having kids. <laughs> like, forget that. And so, and then the gentleman holding Sadie is my brother, and he's not important to this topic today. So, like, he's just there holding Sadie. And so, so uh, the interesting uh, thing is, is, like Matt said, a few years ago I had uh, some events and circumstances in my life, some habits that thrust uh, taking very seriously my own emotional health, own mental health, uh, a priority, making it a priority, more so than I had in the past. But I didn't know what that was going to look like, despite the fact that I had spent approximately about 15 years in social work. I'm not a therapist, but I had worked... Um, in social work for the last 15 years, or for those years before ministry, I didn't quite know what to expect. I didn't know if it was going to look something like uh, this video here. And I was raised by wolves. I was 25 years old before I saw my first human being. Wait, is it a full moon tonight? Oh! Come on, Michael. <laughs> These are all fake stories. <laughs> Yes, yes, they are all fake stories. What sort of twisted mind would come up with weird stories like that? Three hours, we're halfway done. <sighs> oh. You know, and I didn't know if it would look like this. <laughs> this is the worst. This is the worst. You are the worst. I hate looking at your face. I want to smash it. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't quite know what to expect. Um, but let me tell you a little bit how I came to recognize that my emotional and mental health needed a greater level of priority than what I had placed, um, placed it in the past. So around 2016, uh, my best friend at the time, Dustin Cullen, had died in an auto automobile accident. Six months later, to the day, as a matter of fact, I lost my father to cancer. And then later that same year, I lose my mother as a, probably a result of rejection of the lungs that she had uh, received during a lung transplant. And then, in addition to that, even though we celebrate this, my daughter was getting married, and so there were changes and patterns and relationships that were occurring in my home. 
Not to mention that I had spent most of my life chronically overworking, and I had also added the fact that I was going to walk through the process of planting a church. And so, and planting that church was going to remove me from a church that had been a significant source of support in my life um, for just shy of 10 years to that point in my life. So I, now I'm not saying these are the worst scenarios in the world, but these are the scenarios that brought me to recognize that I needed to shift in my emotional health. As a matter of fact, around that time, early 2018, I started to experience depression and anxiety at a degree that I've never experienced to that point in my life. As a matter of fact, I don't think that I would have even said that I had experienced anxiety and depression um, up till that point in my life. My depression actually was um, so serious at that time in my life that I could not, I was just planning a church, a time that I needed a lot of energy, and I would have to take at least just a day of the week just to sleep. As a matter of fact, during that season, I couldn't pull anything off other than the Sunday night service that I had at church. That was literally the only thing that I had energy for. Now, I probably wouldn't have been honest, but had someone ask me, David, do you even want to pastor or plant? I don't know if I always did at that time. I don't know if that's something like that I at that time would have said, but I didn't have the strength, energy to, un like, to pull from the momentum that was moving forward in my life. I had asked my family to leave the church that we were a part of. I had recruited leaders and people who were joining me in this vision, and now I don't have the energy or health to do it. As a matter of fact, in terms of my anxiety, I was walking around um, my driveway one day, and all of a sudden I got real short of breath, and my heart um, started to race, uh, and it was such a monumental moment. My wife actually thought I was having uh, a heart attack and then took me to uh, the emergency room. Come to find out, though, I was not having a heart attack, thank God, but I was um, having an anxiety attack. And it was these types of things that had occurred that let me know that I have got to do something different about my emotional and mental health. If you'll hold that thought for a second, um, we're in a series. We're in a series today, and our series is main, the main things, four areas that require life's focus. Today's topic, mental health, a focus for mental stability. Now, I'm convinced that there are some things that we can learn about taking an emotional health leap in 2022 from the text of 1 Kings 19, 1 through 9. So if you'll join me in that text, um, you can either follow along on the screen, you can either follow along in your Bibles, or uh, you also can join at follow along at sermons.church. Again, the text that I'll be talking to today from is 1 Kings 19, 1 through 9. So join me as I go ahead and read this. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, how he had killed all the prophets with sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely. If by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that one of them, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around there by his head, 
was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. Join me as I pray over the talk today. So Heavenly Father, I just ask you, will you empower me today to share what you want shared? Father, will you be the teacher? Lord, you know what all of us need in this room today. You know the emotional health leaps that all of us need to take. So, Father, I just ask that you would help us to receive everything that you have for us today. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so before we dive in a little deeper, let's, let me give you a couple definitions or possible definitions of emotional health. I got this one off uh, WebMD, as a matter of fact. This one, and it says, emotional health is one aspect of mental health. It is your ability to cope with both positive and negative emotions, which includes your awareness of them. It also goes on to say, emotionally healthy people have good coping mechanisms for negative emotions, and they also know when to reach out to a professional for help. The next definition I came across is the following. Emotional health is about how we think and feel. It is about our sense of well-being, our ability to cope with life's events, and how we acknowledge our own emotions as well as those of others. So between those two definitions, we, we find some themes that begin to run through the topic of emotional health. We see, the, we see emotions. We see the emotions of others. We see our sense of well-being, but we also see this idea of our thoughts. And this is pretty consistent with what I see in the story of Elijah. See, this prayer that he prayed, this moment of desperation where he's saying, God, I am as good as my ancestors. Take my life. This was a thought that was, before it was ever a prayer, was a thought. He was convinced that he was as good as, as dead. Now, when we go on in the story, we see that he obviously had reevaluated that thought. That thought wasn't correct. He reevaluated that thought, which brings me to my first point. We can take a leap in our emotional health by reevaluating our thoughts. We can take a leap in our emotional health by reevaluating our thoughts. See, as we see this in the life of Elijah, he had a thought that led him to a prayer. He was convinced, I'm as good as dead. I'm as good as my ancestors. This was his thought. But then, when we get, if we get to the end of the story, we see that he's restored and moves on. So he actually had to reevaluate that thought. He could have fought with the angel when the angel said, hey, take use bread, water, a nap. He could have said, no, don't you get it? I'm as good as dead. But he had to make a shift in his thoughts. This is something that we often don't think about. We think that our thoughts are our thoughts. But an important part of making an emotional leap is in a reevaluation of our thought life. Now, this is not just something we see in the life of Elijah. We actually see this practice all through the Bible, especially in the, in the New Testament. Let me share with you uh, some scriptures. We go to 2 Corinthians 10.5. It says the following. We demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought. As a Christian, we have a responsibility to take captive every thought. Romans 12, 2. 
Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Our transformation process that we experience in Christ Jesus occurs because we are renewing our mind, reevaluating our thought life. Philippians 4.8 says this, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Here's what I know. In the last three weeks here at Cornerstone, this scripture has been referenced. I think the Holy Spirit is trying to get our attention that there are some things we ought to be thinking about. And man, post-pandemic, we could take some time to make sure we are thinking about some positive things admirable things, good things. Let me tell you how this made an impact in my life. Like I had mentioned already, I had been a chronic overworker. So unfortunately, when the last few years leading up to that point, I had been on staff at a church, there was thoughts like, God will clean up the mess at home or in my health or some of these other areas that I was neglecting because I was giving too much time to the church. Can I tell you, that thought needed reevaluated. I had to take responsibility for my home and my health. There were other things that God had called me to do. I also had some people-pleasing tendencies. I, unfortunately, sometimes would regulate my own emotions and work based on other people's response to me or my ability to make them happy. So I had to reevaluate some thoughts. I had some thoughts that need reevaluating. All right. Now, for me, that meant I enrolled in personal therapy. Now, let me give you some suggestions on how you can take an emotional leap and take some time to reevaluate some thoughts. The first one I would recommend, or the first one I'm going to recommend today, not necessarily in order of priority, is therapy or counseling. Can I tell you something? I really appreciate Pastor Matt because I've, it's been brought to my attention that he said everybody could benefit from counseling. And man, truer words have not been said. And that's good. I can appreciate that from a pastor because far too long, the church has been behind the curve when it comes to emotional health. Far too many Christians separate emotional health and spiritual health, and they should not be separated. All right. I likely will be in therapy the rest of my life, not because I'm broken, not because I'm stuck in the past, or not because I don't trust Jesus, but because I take seriously my emotional health and taking time to reevaluate my thoughts. Now, for some of you, you may have considered, like, I might need some counseling. Fortunately for you, Michiana Biblical Counseling Center is, has a table in the atrium today that you can explore that. You can have that conversation today. And you know what? Most likely, if you've had one of the if you're in crisis, you could benefit from some counseling or some therapy. If you have ever got feedback from someone else that says, "You know what? I think you could benefit from some counseling or therapy." Or you just have wondered, you've had that thought yourself. Can I tell you there is nothing wrong with just getting the information. There's nothing wrong with just exploring it. Explore one of those. Next, you could explore a 12-step program or celebrate recovery. 12-step programs are still the number one way that people partner with when it comes to being 
liberated of addictions. Or it's also been very valuable for those that have been the spouse of someone who's experienced addiction. Now, fortunately, again, for this assembly and those here today, you have Celebrate Recovery on Mondays from 6 to 9. As a matter of fact, Celebrate Recovery would say that it's for anyone that experiences hurts, habits, or hang-ups. Is that not anyone here today? Like, I think we all are experiencing some hurts, habits, or hang-ups. And you know what? Anyone that I've ever spoken to that's a part of that ministry would say the same thing. Everyone can benefit from Celebrate Recovery. So consider that. And finally, I would recommend that you read the following book. The following book, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. I've read plenty of books by this author and this topic, and I've listened to a lot of his podcasts, and can I say, this is some of the best, if not the best content I've read in the last few years. I encourage you, if you would like, if you want to take an emotional health leap, for some of you, reading this book would be the next step. But we have a lucky winner today. We're going to give one of these books away. So if you'll check your program, and if you have a sticker on it, you are the winner of this copy of Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. Who has the sticker? Right on, come on up. Right. There you go. Thank you so much. Also, there are copies of that book for sale today, so I'd encourage you to purchase a copy. Um, the church is not making any money uh, off the sale of that book, uh, but we just want to make that available so um, you can benefit from its content. So, like I've shared, Elijah had to reevaluate his thoughts. We, too, have to evaluate our thoughts. So here's my question. Take a moment and answer the following question. How can I take an emotional health leap this year? In 2022, take a moment, write one thing down. How can I take an emotional health leap this year? So point number one was we can take a leap in our emotional health by re-evaluating our thoughts. Point number two goes a little further. We can take a leap in our emotional health by taking responsibility for our needs. We can take a leap in our emotional health by taking responsibility for our needs. Let's go back to 1 Kings for a second. Let me read, read that. It says, He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. Have you ever considered this in this story? This is a prophet of God. A supernatural being comes to minister to him. A supernatural being, an angel that probably had all kinds of miraculous power. And what that angel provided was water, bread, and a nap. Man, that's my kind of angel. Like, send one of those in today. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> water, bread, and a nap. This prophet of God, angel, water, bread, and a nap. You know what that tells me? That angel was not threatened by Elijah's thoughts. What that angel recognized 
And what God sent that angel for is because Elijah's needs were important. Elijah's needs were important. Check this out. Philippians 4.19 says this, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. You know what in part that's saying? It's saying your needs are important to God. Some of you, that's what you needed to hear today. That's the point that some of you needed to hear today, that your needs are important to God. Your relational needs, emotional needs, physical needs, career needs, whatever they are, they're important to God. So if they're important to God, we need to take responsibility for them. We need to take responsibility for the unmet needs in our life. Or like Elijah, we're going to be we're going to end up broken down. It reminds me of a vehicle. Have you ever seen uh, a dashboard like this? Anybody drive to church today with a dashboard like this? <laughs> Not right on, not anymore. I've had an old vehicle, an 99 Explorer. Man, that service engine light, it just remained on. But guess what? You do that too long, you end up on the side of the road. You ignore the dashboard lights too long, like Elijah, you end up on the side of the road. And you know what? Here's the thing. I believe God has designed our bodies well, and we have some dashboard lights. Now, don't get me wrong. They're not the steering wheel, okay? Sometimes... We have a feeling or an unmet need. We get a control when we pull over, but we just can't drive forever. We're going to have to address, we're going to have to meet the needs of the dashboard. Our body operates the same way. So let me tell you, this is not an exhaustive list, but let me tell you about what I think some of the critical dashboard lights are. It comes from the acronym HALTS, H A L T S. All right? Here's some of your dashboard lights. Hungry. I'm hungry now, Matt. Give me some food. Come on now. <laughs> hungry. Next, angry. Lonely. Tired. Stressed. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, stressed. These are some good dashboard lights. These are some things, there's probably some unmet needs. There's probably an emotional health leap you need to take, some responsibility for your life you need if you're experiencing some of this. Now, unfortunately, here's what I know. You know what I know? Is there's probably some men in here that have been angry for 10 years. There's probably some people in here that have been lonely for many years as well. As a matter of fact, I'm probably talking to some people in this room. You thought stress was the default condition of your adult life. We just get far too comfortable being angry, lonely, tired, or stressed. Some of us are far too comfortable with these dashboard lights going on. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to end up on the side of the road not fulfilling the calling of God on your life. Had Elijah not taken time to meet his needs, to respond to the angel and lean in, to taking responsibility for his needs, he would have stayed on the side of the road. And he truly would have lived out his words and thoughts that he was as good as his ancestors. It's time we start taking responsibility. It's time we start taking responsibility for the unmet needs in our life. It's time we t start taking responsibility for that. So here's my question. Where do I take responsibility for my unmet needs this week? What steps can you take this week? Now, for some of you, I mentioned lonely, angry, stressed. If that's you, visit Michiana Biblical Counseling on your way out today. Explore. Is this something I could benefit from? Have those conversations. Where do I take responsibility for my unmet needs this week? 
Let me pause here and read this following verse. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. It says this, which I think starts a series or a sermon next week. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Let me say this. If you're doing emotional health well, if you're doing emotional health well, these are the things that should be growing in your life. Now, it doesn't mean it's easy. You start making changes to your pattern. You start being less of a people pleaser. You start having healthier habits and not as toxic ones. People who have relied on you to be a certain way might be resistant to that for a while. It's going to impact your relationships. So just because it's hard, just because uh, there might be a little pushback from someone, doesn't mean you're going the wrong direction. Now here, let me also say this. Because um, like, can we just be a church? that supports people's emotional health journey. Because, yes, there's going to be times that someone leans into their emotional health and they weaponize something their therapist said. Or maybe they draw a boundary and they didn't do it exactly perfectly. And it, it, it gets awkward. Can I just say for a, a second, it's not the therapy that's the problem. It's not the counseling. It's not that they read the book that the, pat, the bald pastor gave them. You know what I'm saying? It's not those things. It's that they're human, and this is new, and it's going to take some emotional health from the church to be supportive of that journey. Can we just be that, church? Can I just also add that we're approaching a day, and I think it's good, where we start to treat going to a professional in our mental health, the same way we treat it in our medical community. It's not a matter of if you're going to need a doctor, if you're going to need a professional, it's when. I think that's, and it's just okay. It's just okay. So, if you're exploring emotional health well, you should be growing in the fruit of the Spirit. All right, so let me just revisit that point. We can take a leap in our emotional health by taking responsibility for our needs, as Elijah did. He had to pick up the bread. He had to drink the water. He had to take the nap. So we need to respond the same way. We can take a leap in our emotional health by taking responsibility for our needs. So if you'll stand with me, we're going to transition to a time of worship and give you an opportunity to respond in prayer.